Hi there, and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. I dove into my stash for this one, and I have all of these Studio Calico papers. I really love many of the older Studio Calico papers, and I still have them in my stash. And I'm just looking for a neutral background that I can use as my background for this page. What I have picked out already is uh, this picture of my camper and this paper. It's from the Dream Big 6x6 paper pad from Fancy Pants. And I knew that I wanted to use that piece of paper uh, on, a, on a layout about my camper. And so I kind of had pulled out that piece of paper and also my photos. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff on my on my table here. All of those goodies up in the top left hand corner are the embellishments that came in a Make a Pretty Life kit, which is a traveler's notebook kit that uh, Fancy Pants puts out. And this kit is from quite some time ago. I can't remember the exact name of this kit, uh, but it was from the spring of 2018. And it came with all of these things from the Dream Big collection and also a few other things. So I feel like this uh, polka dot, this large polka dot background paper from Studio Calico is going to make a really great background for this page because it picks up on some of the colors in that really vintage road uh, pattern paper from the uh, Dream Big paper pad. Uh, it did come from that paper pad, you just didn't see me pick it out. And what I really love about that paper from Studio Calico on the background is that those are white polka dots, large white polka dots, but the greenish color that you see in between is actually map paper. And so I thought that was pretty cool. And you see me here just pulling out various things from the Fancy Pants uh, Make a Pretty Life kit. I'm going to use several of the embellishments, including that piece of um, I don't want to, I want to say canvas, but it is not canvas. It is burlap. That's what it is. Uh, and then I have basically three pattern papers from that uh, paper pad from Dream Big. So I have that black one with words on it, the green one that's also a map paper, and then that beautiful photo, like vintage photo of the street. And so what I think I'm going to do with this piece of burlap is make it, is paint it white. And I really love the look of painted white burlap. And the key to painting burlap is to uh, not use too much white. Water. So you see I did add some water just to make my paint a little bit thinner, but I'm just I'm just brushing the paint across the top surface of the burlap. My goal here is not to saturate the burlap with white paint, but to just get that kind of whitewashed look. And so although I did use water, it's kind of like a dry brush type of technique. I really just used water because that paint by basics is so thick that I did have to, to wet it down a little bit. But if you were using craft paint, that would have been the perfect consistency. And if I was using craft paint, I probably would not have wet my brush. So as you can see, that gives me a nice whitewashed look on my burlap and it just tones it down a little bit. It takes away from the harsh, almost orangey color that it had when it was natural. And I'm just taking my heat gun to it just to dry it a little bit. It's still a little bit tacky, but it's, it's dry enough that I can work on it. I'm not very patient for drying things, so I'm just going to work with it a little bit wet. This star came in the kit, and it's a very chunky star. It has a lot of dimension to it. It's probably a good centimeter up off the page or so. I'm thinking about what am I going to do with this tag. So this tag came in the kit as well. It has a whole bunch of little unique pieces of ephemera, including that cotton ribbon like lace that I have pulled out that I'm going to use on this page, a couple of tags, some envelopes, some glassine bags, and that sort of thing. Now I'm using some Heidi Swap Color Shine in the color gold. And as you can see, because it makes the, the tag always kind of rolls up like that, it's always kind of neat to see a tag curve up. And then as you dry it, it just kind of straightens back out again. I really like how that looks. I didn't basically, I didn't want to add too much to the tag. I want the tag to be mostly plain, but just not quite as stark plain as it was when I didn't do anything to it. So I added a little bit too much white there, but that's okay. It's it's mostly going to be covered anyways. So I added some drips and I don't even know if those drips are going to show up, but I wanted to add them anyhow. And I got a little bit impatient for drying them. So I ended up just kind of dabbing them up. 
And you're not going to see much of this tag once it's layered under my photo. Anyhow, you're just going to see a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom. So it doesn't really matter. I just didn't want it to look like such a brand new tag on a, on a page that has so many vintage and um, kind of, I don't want to say distressed, but kind of like a whitewashed look, almost like a beachy whitewashed look. So all of these items are looking really beautiful together and really beautiful with the photo of the camper. And so I'm going to start using my ATG to glue things down. And I'm really mindful over here on the left side because I don't want to cover up too much of my road. Basically, I want all of these layers that I'm creating to cover the road side on the right side of this piece of paper, but not really the road. I certainly don't want to lose the center line of the road under my layers. So I'm mindful of layering everything so that you can see edges of things, like just interesting little edges of things peeking out, but not too far over. I like how that looks. And now I, I tore down this green paper that I'm, that I'm gluing down now earlier in my process. I tore that down a little bit just because I didn't want it to look exactly the same shape and size as the, uh, as the road paper. And I do that a lot when I'm working with six by six paper pads. I just don't want them uh, all to look so much the same. And so I'm gluing this really beautiful, it's a really beautiful um, lace, but it's made out of cotton instead of what lace is usually made out of. It's really a really, really nice trim. So I'm just gluing that down. I'm glu I glued it down to the road paper and then I glued the top of it to the photo on the other side. And look at that big roll of tape. This is the first time I'm using that big roll of tape. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, card makers use this tape a lot and I had never bought it before. I, I was aware of it. And uh, it certainly is an economical way to put foam on your projects. And so I'm also using multimedia matte by uh, Ranger for this project today. This is a glue that I'm just trying. Um, I was, I did a little bit of a shopping spree at Simon Says Stamp and I had lots of money to spend because I got, I had a gift card that I didn't know I had. And so um, I was just kind of trying a couple of different new products and that was one of them. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually writing the date because this is the first time that I'm using this tape and I'm really curious to see how long it lasts. And I was live streaming with uh, my patrons over on Patreon while I was doing this. And so uh, one of them suggested I do that. I thought that was a great idea. So thank you. I think it was Gail who gave me that idea. So thank you, Gail. I do that with my saran wrap. I buy huge rolls of saran wrap at Costco and I always write the date on that, but I don't know why. <laughs> I guess you really only have to do it once to get a sense of how long it takes you to use it up. But So these die cuts that come in the kit, they're also from the same collection, the Dream Big collection, and I really love the sentiments in this die cut set. They're all very inspirational, and but they're not kind of like rainbows and unicorns type of, of overly positive sentiments, but they are very inspirational. I really, really love them. And so the one that I've picked out here says, dream, dare, do, done. And that really goes with the story that I'm going to tell about this camper, which we, we were wanting a camper for quite some time, decided to get one this year, started looking for one, couldn't find one. Basically what would happen is we wanted a used one. Uh, and whenever somebody posts a used camper for sale, before we would even be able to get a chance to say, is it still available? It was gone. So it's definitely a seller's market for campers in my area anyways, maybe everywhere. Um, and so it took us a really long time to get a, an actual camper to even see, let alone to, to buy. So um, we did buy it and we knew that it would need some work, but it actually needed a considerably more work than we realized when we got it. But just getting it was a, a bit of a feat in terms of, you know, having having somebody return your email and say, yes, it's still available. And also at a time when we when we would, you know, have the funds on hand to be able to to actually get it and that sort of thing. So 
So anyhow, I want to do my journaling here in the sky, but I'm a little bit hesitant because I don't know exactly what I want to say about this because I do plan to scrap another page that's going to tell more about the story about how the camper needed a lot of work. So this is more of like the acquisition of the camper layout. And then there will be another layout that talks about the renovations to the camper that needed to be done and the story behind that. And then I actually did a, we actually did go camping in it and I did a fairly lengthy four page project life spread on our first camping trip. And so there will be a series of things in my scrapbooks about, about this camper. And you, you know, we plan to have it for a long time. So this will probably be the first of many camping projects that will be uh, in my future. So I got these little uh, snips that are used for snipping apart your dies because I had been cutting my dies with a set that uh, basically from a, a jewelry makings kit but the, they're the set that I have I wasn't all that pleased with because they don't have a narrow enough tip to go in and get at all the little the little places when dies are really tightly packed together and, and you have to snip them apart anyhow um these snips that I got, I bought them from Simon Says Stamps, and I can't remember the brand of them, but they're actually not very good um, for a couple of reasons. And so I need to kind of figure out what brand they are so that I can know that they're not very good. And so anyhow, I'll keep you guys posted on those, but they they can reach the place that I need them to reach, but they're really not as sharp and they're kind of um, getting bent where the dies are supposed to be it's supposed to be that your snips are stronger than the thing that you're trying to cut but it seems like the thing I'm trying to cut is stronger than my snips because it's leaving all these indents in the blades so I can't imagine I don't know why that is but anyhow um I am on a streak of buying things that just don't work from the camper to that I have a printer that doesn't work I have um various things I bought some paints on eBay and they came half used and I've been just having a really string of bad luck. So anyhow, well, that's neither here nor there. I discovered these really beautiful Heidi Swap letters in my stash and they are like a, a green acetate letter and they're one of my favorite products ever. I have used these many times. I think that this is my third package of them and uh, yeah, so I really thought that the park it part of my title would look really nice in these letters just because it's so big and that's the most unexpected part of my title. So the title is going to be Home is Where You Park It. And park it is, as I mentioned, that's the part that makes this title interesting and different than what you would expect. And so I really want the park it part of the title to be nice and big and bold. So using these letters for that would be a good idea. Now, I really like to staple these letters, any acetate letters that aren't, that are kind of like see-through. I always like to use either my stapler or my sewing machine because any kind of glue that you use, no matter how careful you are, you're going to end up seeing the glue and it just it just bugs me it's it's okay to have the glue showing but it bugs me so I don't want to have the glue showing so I'm using my stapler and as you can see you can staple anywhere on your page with your tiny attacher just by swinging it open and I do have a video on my channel that shows you exactly how to do that so I will link that in the in a card right here in your top right hand corner now that pink tool that I'm using is a We Are Memory Keepers brad tool and it's used for pulling apart the little legs on a brad, but I use it, as you see, for pushing the staples down when you've stapled in the center of the page. And if you check out the video that I linked in the top right hand corner of this video, you will see that I, I'm pretty sure that I show how to use that tool along with your stapler in the staple video. That I'm, that I'm linking. So I just like to keep track of which letters are already missing on those packages of mixed letters, just so I'm not searching in vain for an A when there actually are no A's in the whole package. So that's what I was doing there, just marking off the letters. And I actually, they're not alphabetical, so it was kind of tricky to do that. So I just wrote down what letters I've used from that pack. Now, 
I knew I wanted to use mini market stickers on this, so I'm not even really looking at my my little letter sticker collection. I'm really just focusing on the mini markets, which of which I have many. But I thought that this vintagey feeling, red and black, it's it's actually a, a white and red background with black letters letters on it. I really love these stickers; they're so vintagey. And uh, mini markets are the best. I think I only have one sheet of these, so uh, try not to hoard them. They are very, very nice on vintage pages. They look really great with sassafras-like uh, papers. Which, by the way, speaking of sassafras, this background paper by Studio Calico is actually a sassafras uh, Studio Calico paper. So they did a lot of page papers together, and this is one of them. So I've decided to put home is where you uh, in these mini market letter stickers and I'm just going to scooch them around a little bit. These letters are pretty forgiving so I'm just picking them up carefully so that I don't tear my background paper but you can pick them up fairly easily without tearing anything. So now my title is done. Hooray! This page, one thing that I was saying as I was scrapbooking this uh, and live streaming is that this page really did feel like it kind of made itself. I didn't, I didn't feel like there were any big decisions to make. I was kind of like, oh, I think I'll use burlap. Yep, I'll put it right here. And then I think I'll use this tag. Yep, I'll put it right here. It seemed like the things just kind of pulled together without me even doing anything which is very a very nice experience. So there's my roller date stamp. I'm going to use, it looks like I'm using stays on. Oh yes, I use stays on because of the sheen that is on that tag because of all the mist that's on it. It builds up a bit of a, of a slick surface and so I just wanted to be sure that my date looked okay. Now these word stickers from the same Dream Big collection from Fancy Pants, they also came in the kit that I'm using. Uh, and so... I really love them and I feel like I'd like to get them on the page, but once I put them on the page, they really pull your attention down to them instead of up to the title. And especially with such an airy title like the word park it, the phrase park it is not even outlined or anything. So I really don't want anything that's going to kind of pull your eye too far down. I already feel like that dream dare do done is a little bit heavier than I would like it for this page, but it's just so perfect that I needed to, I needed to use it. So I'm actually going to use this lawn fawn die. It's called bunting borders and it has a straight border and a curvy uh, border. Both of them are banners. And I'm just pulling out of my stash some papers. I was thinking about maybe doing it in gray, but I decided to do it in craft. I just felt like craft would match my vintage vibe that I have going on on this paper, on this on this layout. So oh, I'm going to actually cut a whole bunch of these borders, these banner borders. And so I think I'm going to end up cutting four because... I find that you get a really whimsical boho kind of look when you add a whole bunch of, of banners as opposed to just using one or two. And I find it's also it's a little bit easier to choose my placement when I have a whole bunch of them layered together as I just find that I fuss over it when there's only one or two. But when there's lots, you can just kind of stack them all on there uh, and, and it's all good. So I've picked a couple of patterned papers from that pad that I'm using that came in the kit. It's again, that dream big. I have probably said that too many times now, so I will stop that. Uh, and I've stacked my papers actually, uh, so that I'm cutting two at a time, which was a suggestion of one of my patrons. And I wasn't sure that wafer thin dies would cut paper, but this like two papers at once, but this is pretty thin paper. Like it, it's not like super thin, but it's paper. It's not cardstock. So it, uh, it cuts pretty good to two sheets to one with one kind of go through. And I'm doing that because, uh, to save time, and the reason I, I need to save time is that you actually have to cut more than one of those sets of triangles in order to fill up one banner. So one banner has eight triangles on it. And then there are only six 
triangle dies that come with it. I really wish that they had just given us two more because then you could, you know, run the banner and all of the triangles that you have and you've got an embellishment. Whereas this way you have to, like I had to run multiple run my run the dies through my die cutter multiple times in order to fill one banner. And then since I'm trying to fill four banners, then that's a whole lot, right? So uh, here I am just gluing these pieces on and I am using the multimedium mat, which seems to be really good for this. I hear that it's a very strong glue and everybody who uses it seems to be pleased with it. I feel like I've used this before in pot format, like in a little tub. I'm pretty sure they make this in a little tub because I'm pretty sure that I have one in my office at work. And I think I just use it as like a collage medium, like a, like a, like a matte gel. Anyhow, um, I've never used it in this way, like in a small little applicator and using it for glue. So I'm really liking this. And the nice thing about it is that as opposed to, so the other two glues that I might use in this kind of a situation would be glossy accents, which I really don't use very much anymore. I find the bottle pretty frustrating. It gets clogged up pretty easily. And it, if you, if any of it oozes out, it does dry to glossy. And so you do see it, like you really notice it. I'm just showing that two of these little triangles actually have little cut die cuts within them. So one has a little heart die cut and one has a little star die cut. And that kind of adds a little bit of interest and whimsy to this embellishment that I'm creating. Uh, yeah, so I was back to the glues. So the two glues that I usually use for this kind of thing are um, Tombow Mono Multi and Glossy Accents. And I already told you why I wouldn't use Glossy Accents in this kind of a situation. But for Tombow Mono Multi, if any of it oozes out, it dry, it, it stays sticky because it's one of those two-way glues that if you use it while it's wet, it's a permanent glue. But if you let it dry a little bit, it's a temporary glue. So what ends up happening is anything that oozes out remains eternally tacky. And I really don't want that any tackiness on my on my page here. It's not the end of the world if you have something tacky on your page, because it's just going to be and I don't mean tacky from a fashion sense, <laughs> I mean physically tacky. <laughs> um, anyhow, it's it's going to be inside of a page protector. So it's not going to it's not like it's going to get full of like goop and hair and dust and stuff. But I still just didn't want it to be tacky. And I needed an excuse to try my new glue. So at first I thought I'd use two, even though my whole idea was I wanted to kind of have these banners be in excess, like I wanted them to be um, over the top, like lots and lots of them. It, so I'm starting with two and I'm just putting that glue. This glue is actually a perfect glue for this kind of a thing because when I squeeze it underneath, I'm just basically applying the glue in places where you're not going to see it. And it stays like it doesn't spread out and because it's not so thin, it's really, really thick. So if you put a blob of it, it stays in blob format. So I can put a blob of it and then put the end of my banner in the blob and then just squish it down so that there's glue all around the end of the banner that I put in that it was a blob. Um, and that just kind of holds it really tight in place. I really, really like that as opposed to a more liquidy glue that would kind of spread out and not stay in such a blob. Sometimes you just need a blob. So these puffy stickers also came in the kit. They're also from the same collection. And of course the, the colors work really, really well with the colors that I have already going on on the page. And so I am going to spread those all over the place whenever I come back from wherever I'm at. And by all over the place, I mean, I'm going to put two on the right side of the title and two on the left side of the title. So not really all over the place. But uh, yeah, so at first I was going to do it like this, but then I thought, no, I think I will make it a little bit more symmetrical. Maybe I liked it better the other way. I don't know. Anyhow, it is what it is. I did it like this. And then I thought I'd also add this love it little um, arrow puffy sticker that points towards the camper like in the right direction and I was thinking I really like this trim as well that also came in the kit and I I would have liked to have added this it just kind of like fills up some of that space between where the banners are and then that other piece of trim in order to put this on now I would have to move that dream dare done do 
Dream Dare Do Done. And I just, I tried to pull it up a little bit and it was going to be a headache. So I just thought, no, I'll just not use that trim. That's fine. So remember how I said I wanted to do some journaling on that paper? Well, I decided to make my journaling be on journaling strips. And so I grabbed my Typecast typewriter from We Are Memory Keepers. And uh, this is the only typewriter that I have in my scrap room these days. I do have another typewriter that's smaller, um, but I just don't have room in my new scrap room for multiple typewriters. <laughs> and so this one is the prettier one. So I uh, decided to keep this one. Plus this one has more of a capacity, like you can do 12 by 12 on this one and you can't on my other one. My other one is a vintage. I am keeping it, but just not in here. So I... I'm typing and I'm running into trouble where it seems like my typewriter isn't working, but it's because I totally ignored the bell that I heard that was like, oh, bell, <laughs> and then ignored it and uh, didn't realize that that bell, of course, is a sign that you're at the end of your margin. And I had set up my margins funny for whatever my last project was, and that's why my typewriter wasn't working. So what I ended up, I kind of started to type a couple of different things, but I ended up with, at long last, we found our pop-up camper. And I typed that just on the back of one of the pieces of pattern paper that I already had torn out of the book. As you can see, it was one of the ones I used for the triangles. I'm just using my little Fiskars trimmer here. This is a small guillotine trimmer. It's wonderful. It's new to me. I also have one by Creative Memories. They're both really really great. Uh, this one is from Close to My Heart and it's super light. It's much, much lighter than the other one. So I love keeping it on my desk because I can just really easily pick it up and it stores really nicely in a certain spot. And so that's why uh, I've been reaching for that one more lately. The Creative Memory one is just as good. They both work perfectly, but it's a little bit heavier weight, which sometimes you want a heavier weight, but but uh, for me, just where I make videos, I really do like the lightweight nature of the Fiskars one. I'm using my ATG, which I have to kind of use my fingers to pull the adhesive back around to the other side. Like it's a little bit wider than it needs to be for these strips, but I didn't want to use liquid glue. So I just used my ATG. And I like how those look there. They're very bright white, but that's okay because there are other white parts, like there's white on the camper itself and then white on the trim and a little bit of white in the banner too. So I like to make sure when I'm combining creams and whites that I that I have enough of the thing that's in the minority so it's not too weird looking, um, if you know what I mean. So if I have way more cream and a tiny little bit of white, I want to make sure that I have enough white that it doesn't look like that happened by accident or it look kind of like too bold or standing out too much and then vice versa. So if I'm kind of adding little touches of cream, I have to make to a mostly white page, I have to make sure that I have enough touches of, of cream that it looks balanced and not kind of a, a stark contrast. And I think that with this page, it's a little on the edge like I, I I think that if yeah so anyhow I, I like how it looks is what I'm trying to say so I'm going to scrapbook that picture of my two daughters there uh, sometime soon and I'm just doing some talking here and looking at my layout and sometimes I like to just kind of look at my layout when it's done and think about whether it's okay now when you look at this I'm gonna challenge you to pick out what you think is off balance with this page because something is str is striking me in my eye as being just a little bit off and you may pick out the same thing that I picked out or something different or maybe it looks great to you whatever but I think it's kind of nice to um, just kind of have a look at something after you're done and think about hmm is there anything else that needs to be done not too much like it's not it's important to not kind of be too critical of your work but as you can see I'm pointing out here that I think there's just a little bit too much of that black over there and I wish there was more black over here because it kind of gets covered up by the flower and then that little um, die cut as well. The black does, by the way. Um, so, but I, I decided to not tear it off of one side and add it to the other side because then I would be covering up that center line on the, pap on the paper, which as I mentioned at the beginning, that center line was really important 
important to the overall um, idea of this page. I don't usually have an idea of how my pages are going to go. So this was a, a unique one. I knew I wanted to use this piece of paper and I knew I wanted to have some layers over to the side of the center line of the road. But the rest of it all just kind of came together very organically as I went. And I have to say it was one of the more fun layouts. I always have fun when I'm scrapbooking, but this one was one of the more fun pages that I've made in quite a long time. So it looks like I do this again. I must have forgotten that I already did it or maybe, I don't know, I didn't show the things I meant to show. Anyhow, there's the title. I love how it looks stapled onto the background like that. And uh, those banners at the bottom, I adore those. I they're, They are a little bit of work, but they're so worth it to have those beautiful banners at the bottom of the page. I just love it. So here are some photos of this page. I will be putting it into a page protector and stacking it up with the other ones because I don't have an album to put my pages in yet. Oh, I need to spend some money on some albums, I think. Anyhow, uh, let me know what you think of this page. It does have a lot of dimension because of that giant star. It's actually not that big when you look at it head on, but it, it has quite a lot of dimension to it. And one thing I forgot to mention is that I added that paper flower above it. Uh, the single paper flower. I think you might see it in a second here. Um, I added that because I thought I'd take advantage of the fact that there's so much, there it is, there's so much dimension from that star that I thought anything I put beside the star is definitely not going to get crushed because the star will kind of hold up the page protector. So I put that paper flower there, just that single one, and I, I think it looks really, really neat right there. So thanks so much for watching. Check out any of these other videos. Leave me a comment and have a really great scrappy week.